Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special Thanksgiving episode of the Out for Smokes podcast. It is Thanksgiving Day, and hopefully we are joining you. Hopefully you are, unless you're on the road or you're traveling or whatever, we're happy to be uh, with you on this glorious of uh, American holidays. Mm. What are you guys doing? It's Tuesday night. We just did our live show down at uh, the Sovereign House on the Lower East Side, um, and we had a real dog shit uh, crowd. (laughs) <laughs> we had a real dog shit crowd that didn't appreciate anything that I had to say. You had a funny, uh, you had a funny bit though about the guy, the man he, who is um, a politician. No, he's not a politician. He works he for, for politicians. The, he worked for the, he State, for the State, Department, State Department, which is insane. His steward, uh, Seldowitz, mm-hmm. was just caught on. Uh, he went viral today because he's been spending the last two weeks. Racially harassing Middle Eastern uh, street cart vendors in yeah. New York. Yeah. Like no, but I, it vendors. might be the same guy. He might be just be bothering. Yeah. It yeah. is. I think, yeah. Oh, he's bothering the same vendor. Oh, yeah. Maybe he is just bothering the same vendor. Yeah. Do you ever do this thing in your head where you're like, you think like, okay, how, what's the most evil thing I can do? You know what I mean? Like you challenge yourself to think of something so evil. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that, like that, is a thing that I would, I would go to that place in my mind, mm-hmm. but then just kind of be like, oh god, stop thinking about that. That I'm gonna go and racially harass this halal halal cart guy. Right, you're gonna every day. You're gonna tell him I'm gonna use my uh, State Department contacts with Egyptian intelligence to mm-hmm. have your fucking father's fingernails taken out. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was the wild. It's probably thing. just because he raised his prices a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> and he's it had nothing to do with Israel Palestine, <laughs> which everybody's got to survive out here. Yeah, and my take was that's just how older gay men cruise your dick. Because <laughs> there is some right. truth to that, that um, right. older gay men in their late 60s and 70s, uh-huh. they can't just approach a guy and ask for sex. Right. They have to start an altercation. And, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. See what the fuck's your problem? Hope there's a fist fight that turns mm-hmm. into kisses. Mm-hmm. That's right, how they my gotta, uncle found out he they was gotta gay. see where the tension is. Yeah. You yeah. Know, why are we so angry at each other? Yeah. Oh, because yeah. we want to kiss each other's <laughs> lips. <laughs> and so that's all that guy's doing. He's going, why right. aren't yeah. it's like the second week he's bothering this guy and he's like, How are you not trying mm. to have sex with me? I told <laughs> you <laughs> to go back to your country. Yeah. I, I told you your father should be killed. You're 55, I'm 55. <laughs> We're just trying to He's like referencing the Quran. What does he say? He's like Muhammad raped his sister he's like saying things that of course if you look at the bible you could go okay and god killed all these people right yeah Yeah. well it's interesting he was uh just according to cheat uh here he was uh this guy Stuart uh seldowitz it was the state department u.s state department he was the uh deputy director for israel and palestinian affairs as of 2001 and he also worked he was a national security advisor for obama Um, but like, it's so funny. It's so, it's insane. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, I was thinking like, if you saw a Netflix show and it was this liberal guy who, uh, advised Obama and Clinton was going around harassing vendors and saying 4,000 Palestinian dead children are not enough, Mm -hmm. harassing Middle Eastern vendors, you'd be like, this is lazy writing. They went out of their way to make the, you know... Like cartoonishly evil. They they tried to make like white liberals look like secretly racist just out of their way. But it's like, yeah, apparently this is what he does to cruise for... Dick, mm-hmm. what, what's but, that serial killer show on Netflix? Him or something? Mind Hunter. Oh, him. Where he's like a hot guy. You he like you? There we go. Yeah. Him. <laughs> you know, it's about him. Uh-huh. It's just that, but instead of leaving and murdering people, you leave. <laughs> you just yell at people behind counters of places. Yeah. And then you like tuck yourself in, and she's like, "Where were you all night, honey?" And you're like, "Nothing, no, no, just a long night at, at the office." Oh, honey, you love that halal card. It's <laughs> just him like. waiting in lines, <laughs> all different lines. <laughs> he's the, he's the, I wonder if he orders from the halal card after he does that. He's like, yeah. "Yeah, I bet you, I bet you rape your daughter like Muhammad. <laughs> can I get a grape soda?" Yeah, he's like, "How many can ways I do I have to ask for soda? cum in my food? You can't just ask for cum." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can I get the lamb hero? Yeah. After, and these are quotes from him. He said, uh, "If it was, f- yeah, quote, if we killed four thousand Palestinian kids, it wasn't enough, and that's an undercount as of today." Yeah. Um, and he also said, "You know, to this uh, halal cart <laughs> it's vendor, just his way home. Like this is just his commute. Yeah. He's doing this to someone." 
He asked him if uh, he was familiar with the Egyptian intelligence, uh, and he said, uh, yeah, your father, would he like having his fingernails removed? Mm -hmm. These kinds of things. And it's crazy. What's that about? uh, Well, they torture. The Egyptian intelligence tortures. And uh, Egypt is still a client state of the U.S. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that happened after 9-11. A lot of people... You know, that the CIA didn't like. They would just send them to Egypt to get tortured. Mm -hmm. Syria did the same for a while, though we don't like Syria anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's it's just crazy where, like I said, the deputy director in 2001 for Israel-Palestine affairs. And that's the time when everybody talks about the Palestinians walking away from the peace process. Mm -hmm. Like Bill Clinton... Uh, he he was I think he was campaigning for Hillary in 2016. He gave some uh, some speech at a rally. Was he said, uh, "I almost killed myself trying to give the Palestinians a state." Right. You know, it just like I bent over backwards to give them 20 percent of their fucking country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone walked in on him bending over backwards. <laughs> He's like, "I'm doing it to get Palestine." But it's well. it's nuts because it's like a the uh, Yasser Arafat didn't walk away. It was Ehud Barak. This is 2001. This is the last time there was like a serious. This is called the Clinton parameters or the Camp David uh, uh, Accords between Israel and Palestine. The last time there was like a serious you know chance at two state solution, and Yasser Arafat didn't walk away. Ehud Barak did. But at the same time, like this is the fucking guy who was. In the Clinton White House, right, right. drawing up that deal that the Palestinians were supposed to accept. Mm-hmm. It's just like a fucking psycho who goes and harasses uh, Middle Eastern street vendors in New York. Yeah. So, you know, you wonder, well, uh, why would they uh, accept such a deal written by such a man? He's like, can you get me a grape soda, Yasser Arafat? I like it with a straw. Um, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. What was that? They offered them 20% of their... Uh, they offered them part of the West Bank and Gaza as, right. as a state. Ehud Barak's the only Israeli prime minister to ever offer an actual state to the Palestinians, not just an autonomous region. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, the deal was kind of a poison pill. But, but it's, also, not, it's not connected, though. No, they uh, bisected the West Bank a bunch in mm-hmm. the deal the Israelis offered. Mm-hmm. But Israel, like, we don't... The U.S. doesn't have any treaty, any defense treaties with Israel because in order to have a defense treaty, you have to declare your borders. And Israel's never declared their borders because all the fucking psychos there, they want all the West Bank, they want all of Gaza, mm-hmm. they want a lot of Egypt, they want a lot of Syria. So Israel's never declared its borders, and that's like that negotiation with Clinton is the closest Israel's ever gotten to saying what would be acceptable borders where they just had like cocktail napkin sketches of what they would theoretically offer the Palestinians. Right. And they want to take over Gaza? Yeah. I mean, they're already fucking taking over the north half. Yeah. And um, we'll see if anybody can eject them. So in, in, like, in like the most hardcore like Zionist mind, they're, mm-hmm. they're envisioning like condos with a Starbucks in them like uh, bu- uh, over like a child's mass grave. Yeah. And it's written in the Bible. That's what God right. said uh-huh. when he gave the land of Israel Mm-hmm. to the chosen people mm-hmm. 2,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. He was like, you need to put a Six Flags here yeah, directly over that fucking pile of dead six-year-olds. Yeah, make sure there's a Five Guys and a Shake Shack, and then we'll find out who has the better, who has the better burger. Mm. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Why be down on ourselves? Apparently there's yeah. going to be a ceasefire, which is some good news. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's four pretty days, good, right? Ceasefire? Nice. Four days ceasefire. They're going to... The Israelis exchange the, kids and women. Exchange hostages, yeah. That took too long. Yeah. Huh? You know what's fucked up? Is like a lot of the Palestinians who get killed have Twitter profiles. Yeah. So you'll hear like somebody got killed in an airstrike today. And then you'll go to their Twitter profile and you'll just see like hashtag ceasefire now, ceasefire. Now. And it's like, Jesus Christ. I, I just feel like I should have done more. Yeah. I should have gotten arrested for firebombing Elbit systems. Right. Right. Yeah, you could have you could have <laughs> talked to one of those. <laughs> you could have met one of those girls. Oh, the three that got arrested yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they Wait, were girls legit. got arrested today. Yeah, it's three girls got arrested in uh, Elbit Systems in Massachusetts, an Israeli uh, weapons contractor. And people mm. have been like protesting, like doing uh, um, obstructing the entrance, or you know, doing uh, the bloody handprint uh, graffiti stuff. Mm-hmm. And three of them <clears throat> got arrested today. 
and they're uh, they're facing like felonies because they're overcharging to try to discourage people from doing it. But the way it got spread was that they tried to firebomb Elbit. But as far as I can tell, the um, the actual story is they just were trespassing and you know obstructing the thing. But they had like a smoke grenade or something, or like a smoke canister or something. They weren't trying to firebomb it, mm-hmm. but of course, you know they're being hit with felony charges and accused of, uh, of firebombing because they want to send a message and make people scared to kind of do this, uh, this sort of obstruction. Yeah. Anyways, it's going to be fine. We, we should yeah, talk no, about what I, we're thankful for. We, we should. We should. We'll get into Thanksgiving in a second. I just like, I, I feel like I want to do more too, but it's like there's only so much. There's only, I mean, at, at some point you do have to, you do have to work and make money and get back to get back to life. And now I'm going through this thing where it's like, I feel like this huge failure because I spent so much time on this and now I have to like get back to, you know, like lining up gigs and stuff. And I haven't, <laughs> my calendar's like pretty much empty. I will be at Teehees in uh, Des Moines, Iowa on December 16th if you can get a ticket to that. Um, somebody did write the club, by the way, and said tried, they'd ter- try to get the show pulled. I think I did mention that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, yeah, it's this weird thing where you're like, well, now I have to get back to life and making a living and you, but you don't want to you don't want to feel like you are uh, giving up, so it's tough. You you feel like, and it's just become. It's also becoming so normalized. I feel like there was a lot more clarity in the first couple weeks of this. Yeah, because it was because they didn't there they didn't have it that much time to get the the propaganda machine rolling. Yeah, and yeah. just over time, it becomes background noise. Mm-hmm. You know, another fucking. Hundred people dead today. Another hundred yeah. children dead today. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and instead of justifying like the mass amounts of death, they justify the daily deaths. And oh no, we bombed this place because of this, and we're yeah. just caught up in daily doses of sad shit. Instead of oh, this should have been yeah. stopped. Yeah. They keep moving the goalposts, so now yeah, it's like trying like, to justify certain shit that yeah. wasn't justifiable two days ago, and yeah. now like yeah, you're right. Just yeah. Damn goalpost. I guess what I want to know is like if the Hamas base is under the hospital, it's in a tunnel under the hospital, mm-hmm. then why do you bomb the on top of the hospital? I guess you can't. It doesn't seem to get do the bombs get how do they do they get underground? I guess the idea is they have to leave the hospital, but no one Yeah. Did. How do you leave a hospital? How do you leave a yeah, hospital? Yeah, no, I don't think you can evacuate certain But that's people, like and which that's is what why you shouldn't bomb hospitals. Yeah. yeah, they're bombing hospitals to get the wounded and their families to leave Gaza because they want to annex at least the north half. I think if they can annex the north half, they'll be like, okay, we got enough. We can declare victory. Mm-hmm. There should just be rules to war, and some of the rules, like everything that has rules, need to be kind of stupid but for the benefit of people. So it's like uh, home base. A hospital gets to be yeah. home base. Well, there are if rules I'm chasing war, a guy and he it. runs into a hospital, it's yeah. like I don't tag. get to shoot at him anymore. Right. Let's make some dumb fucking rules uh, right. because the war is ridiculously more stupid than some fun rules we can add to it that could save lives. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Some sort of freeze, some sort of, you know, we'll figure it out. I'm going to write up a, a situation. Yeah. We're going to get this thing resolved. You and advisor Scott Chaplin. Yeah. And I'm like, have you ever played The Floor is Lava? <laughs> Gaza is lava. No one's allowed to touch it. It would be funny, moment. you know, because the, uh, the Israelis do this, but the Swedish uh, UN peace mediators are like notorious for getting assassinated like um there was one mm-hmm. in i believe 1948 the israelis killed I, I forget if he was swedish but he was the un ambassador who was going in like okay i'm gonna solve and i'm gonna make peace yeah. with israel palestine the israelis right. assassinated him right then there's dag hammerskold who was a swede and he got fucking whacked and um in the congo trying to make mm-hmm. peace there and then and bill clinton his reputation got assassinated that's right <laughs> Um, Monica Lewinsky was just a, she's just a Mossad agent. Yeah, she's just a Mossad agent in a fat suit. Uh, but yeah, it'd be great if like Scott she Chaplin. pulls her mask off. And it's just some bald guy with it's just some bald Mossad guy. Is there a reason there's Swedes? It's two different Swedes that um, we're yeah, Swedes to... like to try to make peace and mm-hmm. then get shot in the head. That's mm-hmm. their favorite thing to do. Mm-hmm. Is it like Swedish law that they don't really do anything about it if one of their guys gets hurt? I guess so. Damn. I don't know what it is. I mean, I guess, you know, the Swedes are social democracy, generally kind of happy. I mean, don't ask them 
about who supplied the Nazis with the raw material they needed for their war machine. But mm. other than that, they're generally pretty nice people. Like, you know, the U.S. doesn't talk to North Korea, but the Swedes talk to North Korea. Mm. So that's how we got that soldier back was the U.S. will talk to Sweden and then Sweden will talk to North Korea. They're kind of, you know, they're well known for playing kind of peacemaker. Swe- Sweden's like the aunt in the family. That, yes. uh Yeah. Can. Yeah. It, she can talk to your insane cousin and your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> right. When, like maybe you should call grandma because she sends you money and uh, you always cash the checks. <laughs> yeah, if you've got a Zionist family yeah. and they're talking about, oh, everything that's happening in Gaza is overdue, mm-hmm. the aunt that plays Peacemaker is Sweden in this analogy. Yeah. It's getting harder and harder to, um, let me say... Can I say this on YouTube? It's getting harder to not uh, root for, actively root for Hamas. Can I say that? Can I can I say that? That's probably fine. It's probably fine. I just don't. I just don't. They okay. They did October seventh. Yeah. Okay, that was bad. I, I guess. Yeah. Well, that was, was bad. Let's let's bad. Say, for argument's sake. No, it was very bad. If we if we. You know, and, and for I, argument's know, sake, October seventh. For bad. argument's sake, because as we know that the those cars at the music festival were shot at by uh, Apache, Apache helicopters. helicopters. You know, those kibbutz kibbutzes were shelled by uh, Israeli tanks. But you know, let's say a couple Hamas guys just got out of hand, mm-hmm. and you know, they shot a couple innocent people. Yeah. But since then, it 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 does. It seems like every statement I read from them, I go, okay, I know I'm not supposed to. I know I'm not supposed to like you guys, and I, I, I I'm not going to just blindly trust you. But th- these make a little more sense than, um, you know, we had to bomb the hospital because there was a there was a guy there, there was a guy there in a green bandana. Well, they're so, the Hamas is the only military force resisting genocide right now. Right. So it's like, and that's right. legal under international law. It's not right. only legal; in fact, under right to protect, responsibility to protect, you're. You can't call anything a genocide because the international community is, by international law, they have to intervene. Mm -hmm. And so Hamas is the only military force doing anything about this. It's hard Mm -hmm. not to root for them, Mm -hmm. even if there are videos of them that Israel released executing a couple civilians running away. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's that's bad. Yeah, every video I've seen, you know, of Hamas on October 7th was terrible. Uh Well, mostly I've seen them shooting at soldiers, though I I have seen videos of them executing civilians. Yeah, pulling people out of their cars and stuff. You know. Okay. So that's bad. I mean, after my set tonight, I can relate, huh? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, not everyone deserves to live, I'll say it. Yeah, maybe they were inattentive (laughs) audience members. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe they couldn't stop their fucking side conversations. Yeah. Listen to my six minutes. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Hamas was trying to do a a comedy, the the service of a comedy show. And, uh, (laughs) and they just couldn't, they didn't even give him a little courtesy laugh. You know, it wasn't even attack. It was, it was check drop Mm -hmm. and they just got so frustrated. Mm -hmm. What else is there to do besides, uh, okay, so. Yeah, no, I think we, I think we said, I think we covered everything. There was that interview with that, with that Hamas guy, and he, and he goes, uh, "We're going to do October seventh a third time, a fourth time, a fifth time. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep doing it until they learn their lesson." Yeah, and I go, buddy, I, I was soft defending you on Twitter, and now you get a, now you're making it kind of hard. But it's like so, the, the fucking thing is, yeah. It's not like the Israelis listen to peaceful Gandhi and Al Qaeda. I know, I know, right? Exactly, so it's like, exactly, what are you supposed to do? Exactly. It's like, yeah, okay, don't kill unarmed civilians. That's yeah. bad. I yeah. condemn that. Yeah. But like, yeah, who else is fucking defending the Palestinians? Nobody. Mm-hmm. We all left them. Mm-hmm. We posted our fucking hashtags and didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. The way you said that, if it is a genocide, the international community has to do something about it, so no one will define it that way. Yeah. That's basically what you're implying, right? That if if a country was to say it was a genocide, that country would also have to get involved. Yeah, under international law, which people <clears throat> ignore all the time, but Damn. they try not mm. to. Mm. They're all just like trying to, yeah, looking at the receipt like, I don't know, that is so fucked up. <laughs> just not wanting to, you know, give them what's theirs. Right, it's like when you, uh, when you, your MacBook, when, when your wife catches you texting a woman and smashes it and you need to return it to Apple Care. 
and you say, no, this was not any sort of uh, water damage, any sort of throwing event. Mm -hmm. You say it just stopped working. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> and I don't know why. I don't know why people do that. I don't know why married guys feel a need to text other women. Yeah, or or go on OnlyFans or anything like that. I just think it's so fucking foul. Yeah. Um. Anyway, but yeah, they did elect. They it's, but there's this weird <laughs> thing that people do where they're like. Where they go? Well, they, well, they, the they care, yeah. right? But they, but they, they care so much about liberating Palestinians from Hamas because because Hamas is bad. Mm. But then it's but then, but also they can go. Well, they elected them, so it's somebody. I I, I have this very very stupid friend, and we were we were talking, and he he was like, they have a duty to overthrow them. Well, he's got a special coming out. You can plug in finance. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I might, might possibly someone. Dumber than Ian Fidance. <laughs> uh, no offense, just in case. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, it's just a it's just a weird thing that everybody seems to be like a, a an expert on Hamas all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they, I'm sure they had a few. Uh, they had a few guys that like got out of hand. You know, if you're the Mike. principal of a high school. <laughs> If you're the principal of a high school, you can't account for everybody's behavior. If you're you're saying like, this we, was like a field trip situation? It's like a field trip situation. And kids fucked around in yes, the bathroom. Kids and fucked you were around like, the Are bathroom. you guys serious? Yeah. And then the Hamas principal was like, I'm very disappointed with a lot of your behavior. We were only supposed to take hostages and we're not supposed to shoot anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, it must kind of suck if you were like the kids who did Columbine, uh -huh. and you're like, if I was born in Palestine, I could be a hero for this, instead yeah. of it, somebody everybody hates. You're like a freedom right. fighter. You're resisting right. genocide. Didn't one of those just kids for shooting up wait, your high school? Didn't one of the Columbine kids, his mother, did a TED talk? Probably, and it's yeah. like TED talk. My son was the Columbine shooter. And by the way. Uh, at least three shooters, probably four shooters at Columbine, oh, which yeah? is the, the craziest conspiracy. But like, you know, and people think I'm fucking nuts on Who's this. Who's the third? Yeah. We don't know. I mean, there, there, there are various people people have identified, but if you actually go up and, you know, there's all sorts of, uh, there's YouTube documentaries or whatever, but you go back and listen to the witness statements, they like literally dozens of witnesses from Columbine describe, give physical descriptions of a shooter that doesn't match either Dylan or Eric. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so that is what it is. It's just kind of this weird thing where it like... They're like, he's a 400-pound Hawaiian guy. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Chris Farley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill these kids! <laughs> it was Howard Stern. It was Howard Stern. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. It was 1999, and this is like... It's kind of the... You know, Robin, I went to that Columbine uh, High School. I started shooting some kids. You know I invented school shootings. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. I went and killed a bunch of kids. But uh, yeah, it was 1999, so it's kind of like the last year you could do that without cell phone cameras. Right. Because like now, school shootings, you can't... I mean, you know, it's harder to have the extra shooters because everybody's got a fucking camera in their phone. And what's the... Uh, why do they do that? To get like domestic terrorism bills and stuff? stuff like that yeah more. domestic gladio gun control this kind of stuff mm -hmm. and again it seems insane you know like and I, i'm sure a lot of listeners will think i'm insane but yeah. you can go and you can like read the well witness. i don't know if this is the one that makes <laughs> listeners think you're insane <laughs> i think i think the listeners know who you are and yeah. i don't think this is like surprising i really yeah. don't want to you know what i don't want to believe anything except for 9 11 and kennedy but mm -hmm. then you once you accept they're mm -hmm. lying about 9 11 you're like right. oh yeah the vaccines are poison right they can't see that on youtube but yeah they're lying about a bunch of other shit too mm -hmm. if you know if they're gonna lie about something that big why not do the other shit mm -hmm. were there big and please shootings? edit that last part out about that v word i just want to say we love the v word we are very pro v word at the out for smokes podcast i've gotten uh three boosters this week mm. <laughs> And and I'll I wish I I wish I could do more. I keep going to Walgreens and they keep asking me to leave. And I go, when can I get another booster? <laughs> but but yeah. yeah, no, this is good. Yeah. Do you think we're turning into less funny Chapo? 
Um, Chapo. I've never listened to Chapo. So. Yeah. Chapo's funny. Yeah, Chapo's funny. I don't know. Why? Somebody said that? So it's a, a couple different one-star uh, uh-huh. Apple reviews, uh-huh. which I don't, we don't pay attention to the Apple reviews. Yeah. You got you to gotta spend on the Patreon if you want to get our attention. Yeah, if you want to leave some negative comments, break our hearts. cough up $5. We do see most of the Patreon comments. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Smokes. if you want to tell me that I'm fat or uh, whatever. Um Go over there and uh, and pledge a little money. Um, I just realized this four day ceasefire is going to be during our Thanksgiving. That's good, yeah. Yeah, that's good. You can get a break from fucking death. I mean, and that's we the thing, do. you know. What a, what a weird. Uh, I wonder. If, kind of I wonder exciting. if that was part of, of it. If, if if we brokered it in a way that was like, we got a holiday coming up, mm-hmm. and you're really gonna fuck up some vibes. Mm-hmm. People are already gonna be arguing. Mm-hmm. Can you let them watch a football game instead of the goddamn news? That yeah. really is a Thanksgiving tradition, though, is a temporary ceasefire and the violence you're using to displace the natives. Yeah. That's why what, GW attacked on Christmas, right? Did I make that he up? He attacked, yeah, Christmas Christmas Day, I yeah, think. Yeah, which is yeah. like, why would you do that? Yeah. To win, that's why. To win. Yeah. 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 You show up on Christmas. You show up on Christmas. That's what my CVS manager said to me on Christmas <laughs> Eve, and then I didn't show up on Christmas, oh, really? and I never fucking worked there again. <laughs> yeah, you got to do what it takes to win. You got to show up on Christmas, bomb the hospitals, <laughs> bomb the refugee camps, you know? That's why I like to be Israeli, because we are winners. You see the guy in Argentina people are upset about because he won? He looks yeah. like Ringo Star. Yeah. I think he's kind of nuts, though. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea, right? Is he's, yeah. he's a bit loco. He had a chainsaw with him. Yeah, he's as like What's a that as, about? just to get people excited, you know, like yeah. to rev up. <laughs> yeah. Like he goes, "What would rev the people up?" And he goes, "Well, you rev up a chainsaw. I guess yeah. that would rev someone up." Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, he just runs around a lot. And I should run. For, I should run for. Um, I kind of want to run against my congressman Dan Goldman because he's like he's one of the guys that voted to censure. Uh, Rashida Talib. Mm. So I would love to just call myself Michael Knife Hands and I just get my hands replaced with knives. <laughs> I'm like, I'm coming for you, Dan Goldman. This is Michael Knife Hands. We should look into that. These are like yeah. good kind of promotional stunts we uh-huh. could do. Yeah. I do live in kind of a well a wealthy district though. Mm. Not to brag. <laughs> I, live in, I live in Johnny's old apartment. <laughs> I and can't wait. Very, That'd be so great. It's a very wealthy district. If you actually did it and you like start to get like, you know, double digits in the polls uh-huh. and they, they spend like half a million sending out flyers with every OnlyFans model you subscribe <laughs> to. Like everyone in your fucking building just gets a flyer with your picture and then a list of every single OnlyFans subscription. Yeah, every podcast <laughs> I've done. Every every appearance with Louis J. Gomez <laughs> that I've uh every time I've <clears throat> Michael Knifehand is not, is not afraid of you. I looked up because, you know, Susan Sarandon got let go by her management, I guess. Her agency. Her agency. UTA. Yeah. yeah. For saying, um, I guess she was basically like Jewish people in America know what Muslims in America feel like now. Something yeah. like like to that effect. And so she got fired. She's, I think she said. I was, I was talking to Johnny about it at the show before we came here. And I looked it up. She's 77 years old. She is? Damn. You fired a 77 year old. Yeah. It's it's. I, and also, it's I haven't seen up. her in a thing in a while. Yeah. So are you really just doing this because you had her and because you can let go of her and it's mm-hmm. just a, a shitty statement you can make? Maybe. It, it does seem like it's really easy for them to get you on, like, anti-Semitism. Like, like you, if, you, if you mess up a couple words, like, like Ilan Omar, for example, can if, if, if all she said was the APAC has a lot of money... If if she's right, I think that would be okay. Or APAC lobbies the lobbies our government. Mm-hmm. That might be okay. Yeah. But the fact that she said they hypnotize the world, it's like that little word right there. Then you can go, you know, any. I love you know that's my favorite. Minds. That's how much it's so cool that Trump, you know, that that speech he gives where he quotes Ilan Omar and he's like, mm-hmm. "Israel has hypnotized the world. May Allah awaken the people and help them to see the evil doings of Israel." Is that real? And the United States. He's mocking her, though. Well, no, that's the thing. This is the incredible thing about Donald Trump. And this is why he's a a once-in-a-generation political talent. Right. Is that everything from that quote... He kind of means... Everything from that quote is a quote from Ilan Omar, Uh except for and the United States. Mm. She never said and the United States. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to the clip, it's like when... 
I've been listening to it on loop because it's so funny. It's such a perfect Trump quote. Yeah. Because he says, May Allah awaken the people and help them to see the evil doings of Israel and the United States. It's the pause sells it, uh-huh. and the pause is a completely made up part of the quote. Uh-huh. And it's like he just oh, has, he's trying to make her look bad. Well, he, he adds and the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you add the more interesting parts. Everyone right, goes, and that's Whoa, like what a story. The incredible thing about Trump's mind is like he can take these things that are like sort of true, and mm-hmm. then or, and then he just puts enough enhancements on them. That like you know Hillary Hillary acid washed her emails. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like she ran a fucking program to delete their, <laughs> yeah. to delete what the is, emails. What does that mean, acid <laughs> washed? <laughs> like acid washed the servers. It's like mm-hmm. it's just such a he has such a talent for the visual and knowing like, and you don't even know how conscious this is when he does this, but mm-hmm. he knows like how to add something where it just sticks mm-hmm. in your mind. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, but yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot. Like really that's the truest thing a president has said in a hundred years. Israel has hypnotized the world. May Allah awaken the people and help them to see the evil doings of Israel and the United States. Yeah. Like may Allah do that. Yeah. Well, they got us awake. I'll tell you that. We, we were, all three of us were dropped by our agencies this morning. You know what's really funny? I, I did I try not to look at the comments under my Twitter, but I did see there was one comment that was left by a guy with an Israeli flag. His profile was an Israeli flag. Mm-hmm. And he's he's like, Man, you're really on one. Like, did a did a Jewish agent like screw you over or something? And I wanted to be like, I'm a little insulted you even suggest that. Because mm. every Jewish person I've ever worked with in this business has been has been great. Yeah. You know? No, I mean has been a, a joy to work with. Yeah. Johnny's basically Jewish. Johnny's Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> he is kind of Jewish. He is sort of Jewish. Yeah, if you know enough about editing our podcast, <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're Jewish he's, to Mike. He's, yeah. I got a Jewish guy. He does yeah. great work with editing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like part of your bar mitzvah is they teach yeah. you how to edit podcasts and manage show business talent. Did you guys go to bar mitzvahs? They teach you what podcast equity is. It's like taking fucking ten percent of a stand up's income is what the is when you become a man at thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Did we go to what? Bar mitzvahs as a kid? No, I never I've never been to it. Oh no. You know, I, it's fucked up. I realized I'd never been to one either. And I yeah. worked a bunch as an adult. Oh, I yeah. guess I just yeah. didn't have any Jewish friends in Seattle. I made them all when I moved out to New York. Yeah. Me too. Made a lot of Jewish friends in New York City. <laughs> I have many. I cherish many. I uh I, they're they're great. Um, Thanksgiving. What are you guys doing? I'm here. I went back to Seattle last week. Oh, okay. So you want to come to Jersey? Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to impose on your family. Yeah, but you're welcome to. I appreciate that. You're yeah. Get picked up and dropped by your brother. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> My bro- <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he could if he wanted to. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure my brother could uh, uh, probably snap Sean in two, if he, no. if he wanted. <laughs> but he's not going to do that. Um, he's going to eat Sean and say the turkey's too dry. No, he's not going to eat gonna Sean. Your brother's going to get freaked out because he's going to think I'm one of those fucking inflatable blowy things outside of a car dealership. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be like, what's he doing yeah, at Thanksgiving? <laughs> he's going to go, Slender Man! <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you bring me and you tell your brother I'm Slender Man. <laughs> Now, if you don't behave, Slender Man will kill you and the entire family. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you... Guys, I'm very sad to announce uh, our co-host, Sean McCarthy, has been snapped in half <laughs> by, my, by my brother. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to my aunt's. I'm going to make some Brussels sprouts. I, I really... You ever get nervous? Like, you ever get yeah. nervous when your brother starts, like, petting Deb's hair? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, because I'm stronger than him. Okay. I, I'm sure he wouldn't like if I said that, but it, yeah. it is true. He pets Deb's, Deb's I, hair and asks about the rabbits. And Mike's like, "All right, mm-hmm. time for your tranquilizer." Wow, I've never heard that. I've never heard that <laughs> analogy before. <laughs> what a great, what a what an un, underused reference that was to describe a mentally challenged person. <laughs> Hope you feel good about yourself. I do. <laughs> Hope you feel real good. Um, 
I don't know. I just I, I like Thanksgiving as a holiday. It's nice. I feel like I talk about this every every year. Every year I do like a Thanksgiving episode, and I want to talk about Thanksgiving, and and then I, but then I'm just like, yeah, that's it. I like mashed potatoes. Yeah, I used to like but, Thanksgiving a lot. Yeah, yeah. Then I don't have enough family anymore to go. Yeah. Whoa! It, it's <laughs> always a, a kind of empty table. Scott was like, "God There's needs tension. to give me more things to be thankful for." Now, <laughs> <laughs> killed my fucking dad. <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not saying thanks. Oh my God. Sean is on one thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, my gr- grandfather's 96. He's not doing great, but he's still... My ha- grandfather's still 97. Ha- yeah. I'm thinking about trying to visit him for Christmas. Yeah. But I also don't want to give him COVID and kill him. Right. But I guess you got to visit him anyways. Yeah, but some people get COVID in their, in their 90s and they survive. Yeah. My... I, for some reason, my people like live a long time. My great grandma was 103 when yeah. she died. On my mom's side, they all live a long time. On my dad's side, they all drop in their 50s and 60s. Hmm. It's because they pick up a bag and they just <laughs> at the airport and they just can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, these are all suicides. <laughs> yeah, they, rooms they listen like to an newspapers. episode of my, <laughs> of my podcast. <laughs> They get pecked to death by a bunch of chickens that are that they're that someone smuggled on a Delta flight. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, my mom makes this good mashed potatoes with uh, cream cheese and sour cream, so it's got like a, like a little tang. That is interesting. That's nice. Is it thick? It's thick. Yeah, yeah. It's a little, like it's not it's a like smooth. Thick. Um, mashed yeah, potato. it's like a little thicker and creamier. Yeah, yeah. but it's really good. I like mashed sweet potatoes. I'll, I'll mash oh, some yeah. sweet potatoes. I might do that actually. Mm. Shit's delicious. With some pecans? I don't. I don't think I've ever done that. No. No, I know I've never done that. Yeah, it's good with some pecans. I sometimes. just had pecan and a chocolate chip cookie two days ago. What'd you think? My aunt um, doesn't come to see us on Thanksgiving ever. Yeah. And so this year she reached out to all of Scott's us. Scott's having experiences as a as a thirty three year old man that you. <laughs> <laughs> that you have like <laughs> my fucking aunt wanted to have a cookie party on uh-huh. Sunday and so we had a cookie party uh-huh. um where everybody made a type of cookie mm-hmm. and then Scott just had nutter butters for the first time <laughs> <laughs> and then we all like m- made our own trays of the assortment of cookies and then that's where we will bring wherever we right, go Thanksgiving right, right. You okay know? That's and, fun. Uh, yeah, except no one made cookies except her. <laughs> so we just like showed up, took cookies from her and left. Yeah. Pretty nice. My uncle dated this woman. My my uncle my mom's brother is like he works at he works for United and he doesn't have any kids. He's got like a younger girlfriend now, but he dated this woman for a long time. And she had this uh she would have this tree trimming party. Mm. And this woman was like just such a bitch for no reason. <laughs> she was, we all like kind of didn't we all didn't like her. She How was just was mean she? to us. She was like my uncle's age, so like in her forties, oh, I okay. guess. She was age. Yeah, but they were like dating. They like had a house together. And she had this tree trimming party, and so, and my cousin, but she was really nice to her nieces and nephews, but like really mean to us. And my my cousin took one of her uh, her ornaments, and he goes, "Look, it's suicidal." He like hung it on the tree, and goes, "Look, it's suicidal Santa." And she goes, "Michael, do you know anyone who committed suicide?" And he goes, "No." And she goes, "Well, I do." And it was very upsetting. <laughs> so that was like a fun memory that I, I don't get to see my cousins anymore. That's too bad. Yeah. What are what they doing? Some, uh, my cousin lives in uh, Pennsylvania with his wife and his two kids. They just don't. They just don't hang anymore. It's funny to just think of like you, but not a stand-up. Yeah. Not a podcaster. Right. Just some fat kid. Just like some even fatter guy. <laughs> Just more of a slob. With stronger opinion. <laughs> even less fucking <laughs> self-control. Yeah. Does he talk to you with respect and fondness or no? Who? Your uh, your cousin. Or does he think you're kind of a, a dickhead? Um, yeah, we're friends now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You align? Like your brains align? You go, yeah, I think like so. Like when you go... There was a minute where going to a family event, I'd go, ah, who do I talk to? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And now my brother, my one sister's husband, yeah. my brother-in-law, I go, oh, he's, we could definitely talk about anything the whole time. Right. And sometimes cousins would, like, form alliances. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah, the yeah. older ones would get, would bully you, you know, or then, or or the girls and the, the oh, yeah. would kind of separate. Hmm. But, uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I hope nobody says anything. I hope I hope I hope I don't end up like fighting with my grandmother. 
Do yeah, they follow you on Twitter? We, well, we kind of avoid politics usually, so oh, that's okay. good when we're together. But what if they're big Michael Rapaport fans? They might be, yeah. Just, I was thinking of reading my grandmother the Osama bin Laden letter and she'd be like, Hey, there's this new young conservative guy who's like <laughs> who's like a really oh, you he's awesome. His name's Tom Tucker. <laughs> yeah, you gotta record. He's got a podcast. Yeah. He's got a podcast on Daily Wire. Yeah. And he's really against homosexuality. Yeah. He said America no one has manners in America anymore. <laughs> Check this shit out. He says AIDS was made by the Americans. <laughs> like that's crazy. Like you know, I like him it's more so than cool. Candace Owens. Yeah. It's so great to just... Free speech is really awesome. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's like, you know, people get down on this country, but uh-huh. free speech is awesome. Yeah. we got to cherish it while we have Hey, Osama Bin Laden, try writing that letter in Saudi Arabia, huh? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you had to come... You'd be you dead. Could, you had to publish it You'd to America, dead. didn't you? You had to... Yeah. Because you needed the free... You needed the First Amendment, baby. You needed the First baby. Amendment, didn't you? you That's <laughs> what... Fucking bitch. Obama... Uh, Osama was enough of a lawyer, <laughs> so he knew... <laughs> that he could only publish the letter in America where there's free speech. <laughs> it's so great. Nobody's right about everything. That's right. You know? So it's like, yeah, AIDS was made by... It was made by the Americans. Made by the government. Yeah. I bet I can find... I'm going to... Maybe I'll make that like a video. What? The uh, the Osama letter? Yeah. Yeah. And just tell her it's a it's a conservative. I'll tell her it's a woman who, uh, who um, escaped from Cuba. <laughs> her name is Carmen... Carmen, <laughs> Carmen Adios. <laughs> she works for Daily Wire, and she wrote this. She wrote this column about America. I'd be like, Grandma, you'll never guess where in the world Carmen is today. Yeah. No one has any manners. Hmm. That is kind of true. You'd be like, Grandma, she's Latina, but she doesn't vote for the Democrats. Yeah. Sean, what's your favorite uh, Thanksgiving side? Probably sweet potatoes. Yeah? Yeah, I like a sweet potato. What kind of pies are you guys into? Oh, I don't like pies. No. You don't like pies? No, I think pie is something that was made before like ice cream and modern desserts, you know? So pie is for pilgrims. Pie is for, uh, yeah, lame whites. An apple pie with ice cream is like one of the... No, well, the ice cream the is world. really good. Yeah, the ice cream is very. Yeah, but good. you need the pie to cut the. No, they the got pen. Ben and Jerry's now, where there's other cool, fun, exciting things inside of ice cream that isn't pie. Yeah, but a warm piece of apple pie with the with the cold nah, ice cream, the it's little, a little the too. Tang, so I like apples. Tang, I'll eat an apple tang. all day, but um, I like my treats. You'll eat to an apple, have, but like, you won't eat an apple. Fruit pie. added in it, I, like even um, you ever get Italian ice and there's real like strawberry in it. I don't and like you feel that. like completely like betrayed. That. You yeah, go, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to be a scumbag here, not yeah. eat fruit. Yeah. That's how I feel about pie. They try to it was before before they could go all in on disgusting. And so they <laughs> needed to have some fruit still. Yeah. I do remember when I was five, I was at my friend Jeff Fisher's house. He was Jewish. And uh, his mom brought us jello and I was eating the jello and there's fruit in it. And I, I go, I go, Mrs. Fisher, is there fruit in this jello? <laughs> she was like, Yes, Michael, there's fruit in it. Just eat it. <laughs> she was yeah. like, just You're eat it. Like it was a bug. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, was, I did feel very betrayed that this woman put fruit in my jello. Yeah, yeah. I'm just That's trying so to be gross. Yeah. American kids just eat so much slob. Yeah. That you're like, you encounter a natural food yeah, and you look yeah, at yeah. it like fucking maggots. Yeah, yeah. This is disgusting. Disgusting, but I don't know. Keep it out of the Jello. Yeah, <clears throat> I think. I don't know. So you guys don't do like uh, Israel. But you pump- like pie, right? Yeah, pumpkin, apple. It's probably pumpkin would be the. I've favorite. tried for years to like pumpkin you pie. You don't like pumpkin I don't pie. think it's for me. It's... I'll eat a piece of it and I'll go. Yeah. This is fine. But I what, yeah, when it feels it's, like it was something that, that was some left real whipped out. cream and pumpkin pie. When it's in my mouth, I think of diarrhea. <laughs> I'm like, because it does have the, te- the the consistency of like, if you took a perfect shit, it would be the consistency of pumpkin pie, I think. Right? Yeah. Like, I would eat it from like an shit. Amish person. I would eat a pie from an Amish person. Yeah. But I'm not going to eat a pie from just a, anybody. I did. I was driving through the Midwest recently and there was like an Amish stand and they were selling pies and I got it and it was like disgusting. I got a really? peach pie. Peach pie. Yeah. Oh. yeah. 
And I was like, this is a rip off. This is fake Amish. You think you have like a repressed childhood memory of like some guy at the Thanksgiving, like shitting into your mouth and saying it was pumpkin pie. Maybe. I, people seem to love it. I just, I can't, I, I'll eat it if you, if you put it in front of me uh-huh. and I'll go, all right, I could see why some people like this, but I don't, it, it's not, it's never like sweet enough. It doesn't feel like a dessert to me, hmm. you know? No, desserts don't have to be that sweet. Yeah, I just if my if my dog took a shit and it had the consistency of pumpkin pie, I'd be like, "Oh, good. He's he's got a nice diet. <laughs> his, his whatever we're feeding him is working." You think we could blindfold taste test you? Your dog shit or pumpkin pie? I would probably No, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. But I just think a piece of apple pie with cold with ice cream is like warm pie with cold ice cream. It's, I don't it's think life. Combination. I don't think life gets much better. Oh yeah, I like a warm cookie with uh, ice cream. That's the McDonald's. Yeah. You know, you get the apple pie and you get a little uh, sundae. Oh really? Yeah. Dip the. Uh, I've never dip, done that. Dip yeah, the pie in the sundae. Does apple I've pie? I've never done that. Yeah. And their apple pies are good. They're not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it because it's probably more candy mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Like Entenmann's. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, like, some of the uh, greatest chemical engineering minds of our generation invented the McDonald's <laughs> apple pie. Right. So, of course, it tastes good. Like, these guys got right. a PhD. Right, right. So, they know what they're doing Yeah. with their desserts. Yeah. I like leftover turkey, though. That's my favorite part about mm. Thanksgiving. It's cold turkey days later, and I'll okay. just pour, like, salt and pepper on it. Okay. That's about it. It's nice, like make making, a cold a, making a sandwich of oh, Thanksgiving like leftovers. Leftover is nice. round yeah. rolls or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. With I know the a gravy. few friends who are like, I mean, they're going back and they're just going to have to argue with their pro-Israel family. Yeah, like they're pro-Palestine, and then most their fa- like you know mainly my anti-Zionist Jewish friends, mm-hmm. and they just got to like deal with like they're you know they're already there now. Yeah, so they got the whole fucking week and weekend. Yeah. To just go through arguments about that. I'm just hoping Which, nobody brings it up because my my family is just so fucking stupid. They just they just have Fox yeah. News on all the time. Yeah, my uncle brought it up at the cookie party. He and did. It, it was <laughs> it was such a relief that he he didn't know nothing. Like he was just like they can't mm. come over here and yeah, think yeah. that we're gonna live like them. And I'm like, that's not that's what's happening. Like, I'm yeah, like, yeah, 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 wait, what right, the right. fuck movie are you watching? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's just a totally yeah. different topic. And I'm yeah. like, oh, thank God. He just yeah. thinks that's what's happening. Yeah. He brought up Ilan Omar. He was like, you know, if she, we got her, we saved her from over there. She could be dead. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, I'm, you saw like an sure. adventure movie where yeah, that happened? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. give a shit. Yeah. yeah. He was <laughs> so far removed from reality. It's not, you know, yeah. I met this uh, random guy at a bar at like 4 a.m. And he was just like some... He worked in construction in New York, just like a real like New Yorker, you know, Queens guy. Right. And uh, my friend looked him up on Instagram. Who they're they're falling off, by the way. Native yeah. New Yorkers. Native New Yorkers are falling yeah. off. Well, it's great to know that they like still exist because mm-hmm. like so. My friend looks him up on Instagram, and one of his like f- the first Instagram posts he finds, mm-hmm. it's a meme of Ilhan Omar, and the text says, "I hate Donald Trump." Uh-huh. And then under uh, Donald Trump, the text says. Most terrorists do. <laughs> <laughs> no so yeah, of course. It's like just a regular fucking Italian Queens guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's yeah. so, because no- yeah, you don't want to disturb that. Yeah. It's like an endangered species. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just beautiful to see it in the wild. Yeah. I was, I was drunk at a bar a couple of weeks ago, like, and I love just being drunk and uh, on my phone. And I saw some reply under something where some guy was like, yeah, you know, 9-11 happened. It feels like people forgot or something like that. And I just commented. I go, no one gives a fuck about 9-11. <laughs> and I'm sure I, like, really pissed this guy off because he goes, you'd never say that to my face. <laughs> he just responds. He goes, <laughs> he goes, you would never say that to my face. I go, I go, actually, and I, rep- I replied. I go, actually, yes, I would. I live in Brooklyn. <laughs> Like, I was just really drunk, and I just wanted to, and I feel like I kind of owe that guy an apology, but it was fun. It is, it's it's fun to get under people's skin, I guess, right? Well, it's fun to, like, it's nice that there are those people who just, like, threaten violence on the internet and mm-hmm. post the boomer memes. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't know, it just feels so much purer than all this, like, seven layers of irony bullshit. Right, you right, know? right, right. I do get sad when old guys are on video arguing with someone and there's that moment where they're like, I will get physical with you. And then mm-hmm. they realize they can't because they're Cause older. Because it's a Gen Z. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. older and you just go, yeah, Gen Z dude, will you'll sue you. <laughs> just get your ass kicked. Yeah. 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 
You know, after Gen it had to Z, be nice. It's Gen Alpha. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. And I think Can after I just say, Alpha, it had to be nice. It had to be nice when there weren't. Well, I don't know. They'll probably have another name. You don't have to go down the alphabet. Well, they're doing Gen Alpha. It seems like they're yeah. Doing but I don't alphabet. think I don't. They're not going to go Alpha Beta. I, I would hope Cap, not. Kappa. They're not going to do that. They did Gen Z. Yeah, but they're going to have some other yeah horseshit. name. Yeah. yeah. But um, what was I going to say? Ah, I forgot what I was going to say. What were we talking about? Boomers. Politics. Oh, it must have been nice to. It must have been nice to live in a time where there weren't like security cameras everywhere, right? And you could kick somebody's ass. Yeah, you could do like you could have three or four people shoot up Columbine and then blame two people. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, my it's uncle said he would day. like steal people's <laughs> car doors back in the day. Um, oh, yeah. Just if they were like rude to him. You know, if he mm. was eating at a diner and someone mm. was shitty at night, he would like steal their car door and then no one would, That's cool. would find out. Yeah. Mm. Whereas now, immediately, you would get in trouble. Like, cops would be at your door the next day. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you can't even hit somebody now because they'll, they'll be like, you assaulted me. Yeah, there's no. Cameras. I have it on camera. Well, also, they like. Zoom and all these like camera things that you buy, they'll uh -huh. like make agreements with your like local law enforcement and just take the camera footage. And oh, they do. Yeah, yeah. I that think we're gonna sense. miss the boomers when they're gone because that's think? the that's the last huh, pre sarcasm pre sarcasm they're, they're generation, funny. right? Because you know Gen X, they're all sarcasm poisoned, and then you know yeah. millennials, Zoomers, we're all just irony in this bullshit. Like Z boomers are the last generation that just feel things authentically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. they're like, like on the ground funny, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if you like read the Fox News Instagram comments, mm -hmm. you know it's always like, oh, I wish she was teaching my school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, some I fucking know. pedophile <laughs> teacher. <laughs> <laughs> like what's the kid complaining about like and one day like not that long from now those people will all be dead they'll be dead and yeah. like what yeah. the f it'll be like monuments to a lost civilization yeah 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 just the remnants of the fox news instagram comments page you'll just see it you'll just see some 60 year old guy be like yeah you know i had a 16 year old when i was 31 <laughs> just Confessing the crimes, <laughs> like that. Yeah. Fucking and how guy. many guys that age have like lied about <laughs> essentially crimes against girls because yeah. they were just wanted to brag? Well, the fucking they're like everybody's racist. <laughs> the FBI shot to death that guy who was like threatening to kill Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah, just like on his. I know. You know, he oh, just said like, man, "I have a right? gun. I'm gonna kill you when yeah. you come to my state." <laughs> <laughs> he just post that on his Facebook. Awesome. And the FBI just blew his head off. <laughs> He was unarmed at the time. <laughs> do you feel guilt when you look at all these people dying in Gaza? Do you feel like, God, all these people were like robbed of their, their potential? Like there was a kid oh, that had yeah. a YouTube channel and he, he's like, the, the, the kid died in an airstrike, but they were like, his dream was to get 100,000 subs. Oh, like God. these people could have done so much with their lives and they're being killed. And we're just these f three f gay ass slobs sitting here with this little podcast. Right. Like, like I, I don't know. I just feel like I'm, it's... It, it it it's interesting, like the the things that privilege kind of kind of does to you, because all these people are like they're they're like this is our land, we're ready to die for it. Keep sending the bombs, I don't give a fuck. Hmm. And then we are just sitting here being like, I wish I was, I wish I was doing more. We're eating our little snacks, right? You know, it's two point three million people who would give anything to have a middling podcast mm -hmm. that's <laughs> become a less funny chapo. Sean, no. you got to stop with that. No, I know. I don't believe it. <laughs> Sean, you need you need a thicker skin a little bit. Yeah, they get under my skin. You, no, I don't even care. No, I mean, look. It's like tonight I mean, of the show you apologized on stage. Oh, for well, my new jokes were bombing. Yeah, but no, they you weren't doing bad. I was doing fine. You weren't doing bad and you thought you were and then you felt the need to apologize to the crowd. Yes. You got to you threatened to kill yourself in front no, of No, but her. let's actually go back to Say that. Say it's their fault. Yeah. Because you're right. It's like, yeah, we fucking, we, we won the lottery in yeah, terms right. of birth. Right. And then all and we're disgusting. We're disgusting, yes. Yeah. We're disgusting. We're useless. Americans are disgusting. <laughs> They're fat and they eat burgers. I don't, I, I don't want to name the friend that I got into the argument with. Johnny knows who it is. But, but I just, I look at this person sometimes and the stuff that he was saying about the Middle East, I go, this is ridiculous. But then, but then, and, and you know when you argue with someone that you're not supposed to like attack, you're not supposed to ad hominem them? Mm -hmm. I just want to ask this guy like, how do you call yourself a man? <laughs> you live in Manhattan. I don't know how you make your money. Oh, he lives in Manhattan. You're, 
you're severely, severely overweight. Mm, still you're, make it too obvious. Yeah, but you know what I mean. It's like, it's like, how, how are you content with your with your life? It's oh, I think I cracked. Yeah, it. you know who it is. Mm. Good guy. I like you know he's a good friend of mine, but. Uh, but yeah, there was like just on. Yeah, he always has bad takes though. He always has bad takes. Didn't yeah. he say like Haiti was a? Sh- Someone said Haiti was a shithole, and then he like agreed with it, and then Trump, yeah. everyone got upset. With he him. has our, our our the friend that we're talking about. He has bad takes, but he's a, he's a funny guy. Well, I think the intent is funny though, and then you go, that's no, that's not even that funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I think he did say. I think he, he did say. People got mad at him because he said Haiti's a shithole. Yeah, and yeah. I remember when he did that. I know what he was trying to do. What he was trying to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> knucklehead yeah that's yeah but yeah like the palestine thing there's a woman on twitter who's killed in an airstrike and her parents israel killed her and her parents today mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and on her twitter from june of this year she has a post celebrating becoming a pharmacist yeah and that's fucked up to see and of course if you go to her fucking twitter profile it's like hashtag ceasefire now yeah so you just feel like you let those people down like i didn't do enough you know yeah and uh <clears throat> you remember that scene from Jojo Rabbit where they go to the square and there's people that are hung? Right. And the kid asks his mom, he's like, what did they do? And she says all they could. Right. And he's, that's what we got to do. We just got to, you know, you got to do all you can. Yeah. You have to not have sex with your wife for three weeks because you're reading about, <laughs> because you're watching a documentary about the Oslo Accords. I'm just kidding. We're happy. We're, yeah. We're, it's fine. We're fine. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta do everything. Mike, Mike, did you, uh, did you get happy when Scarlett Johansson got killed in that movie? Cause she insulted Spoiler. your, your food, <laughs> your, the, the food you brought to the party. <laughs> she made a mockery of it. She and didn't you're make like, a mockery of take it. that bitch. No, you no, got I didn't. strung up no, by the Nazis. No, not at all. Not at all. Have Her we told that story on the show? We, we told it on one fucking episode. Okay. Well, she didn't like food you made. No, I, we were doing. I was opening for Joe's of the Beacon, and I went to Seven Eleven and got some snacks. And I said, "I got some snacks if you want them." And she goes, "Yeah, okay, yeah. Let me get some of that warm cheese because <laughs> I bought like string cheese and baby bells." Yeah. She goes, yeah. "I'm good. I'm uh, drinking the blood of Palestinian children." Yeah, exactly. Probably. I am going to their Christmas party though. Not really? Back. Yeah. Oh, dude, Racina's back. Yeah. I'm going to wear like a little... Uh, you know, it is like fucking Goodwill Hunting, where every day I pray that you're better than this podcast. Uh-huh. Like every day I show up to record and what I do you hope mean? Mike won't be there. What do you mean? The podcast I'm, is... This is this is, this is is my... Yeah, you knock on the life. door and he doesn't answer and this you're is, like, wow, he's gone. And you think he drove away, but he's just inside taking a shit and couldn't get the door. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is the best thing I do. Yeah. But you could uh, you could be Saturday Night Live. No, I can't. Head writer. I don't know. No, I can't. There's other things. <laughs> I I try. I I got close one year, and they hired Drew Michael instead of me. If you can believe it. Should have sucked more Zionist <laughs> cock. Yeah, exactly. Um. But yeah, I saw Drew again on the street. By the way, he, he <laughs> was <fucking> coward. <laughs> what? This me? is God. Yeah. <laughs> God, you know there is God. Yeah, Mike. This is what he's doing. So I went shopping with Drew Michael. Well, (laughs) (laughs) so I stood behind Drew Michael in line. I went to the zoo with Drew Michael, and we both pretended we didn't see each other. Well, no, I saw him, but he was walking kind of far ahead of me, and he was Uh, walking the other direction, and he was with a girl. Yeah, but I did think it. But part of me was like. I should get a city bike and drive by him on a city bike and go, "Hey, Drew, kill yourself." (laughs) Just. The funniest thing you to, should learn how to sign that to yell on a city bike, yeah. But like I said, I don't want him to do that. I just you don't want, want him to kill himself. No, I just hope he's at, I hope he's not comfortable with his decisions. Mm. I hope he feels bad about his yeah. decisions. We'll get ready for the uh, but he's a human being, you know. Now, Brett Gelman, on the other <laughs> hand, I don't think that's a human. I don't, I don't, I really don't think that that's a person. <clears throat> That looks like a demon. Giannis Papas is one of those guys where I'm like, Jesus Christ, if this guy's a political commentator, what the fuck am I doing? Right. How did I, how did I fail enough? I feel like uh, he kind of, he kind of chilled out a little bit though. Giannis Papas. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure I he's think. fine. I'm just like, you know, I've never seen him do stand up, but one of the most retarded people I've ever seen on the internet. He's he's. I think he's grifting a little bit. Grifting. 
Yeah. I think he I think he dresses up I think he finds a way to launder these like right wing talking points by being like, I'm just I'm just objective and I like history. Mm. I think he's yeah, I think he's grifting a little bit. Yeah, sometimes when it comes from a comic, um, I go, oh, do they not realize that's like a Fox News talking point? And uh, do they no, think, I think they're they, having like an original like take? Like an original that, take, yeah. Because all of their like liberal friends are posting other things mm-hmm. and they're going, well, I do have What's this the- one observation, so maybe I can own them on that. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, actually, it's like a trope that like everybody uses and it's not I th- a I real legitimate argument. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think it's calculated and it's just dressed up as like I'm just a I'm just a wild I'm just a wild like comedian. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like we talked about Carlin on last week's. You podcast, can't be like but... subversive and, and pro Israel, I'm sorry. Yeah. But Carlin hated like Andrew Dice Clay too. Carlin's like on the news shit talking Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah. yeah I, mean, like, I think Carlin talks about like how Andrew Dice Clay insults people. Like he kind of talks about punching down and yeah. how mm-hmm. you shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, whatever, George. Yeah. We should Speaking talk, which, about but he is right about the dice. For. <clears throat> What's that? We should talk about what we're thankful for, unless you had something else. Let's talk about what we're thankful sure, for, sure. and then we will. God, it's late, huh? Yeah. And yeah, then we will dude, call it a at night. night, boys, and yeah. then we'll worry about the Patreon another time. Sure, sure. Um, we're gonna. I think this was a good episode. I think it was all right. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, we, sure, more Israel Palestine, but this is what you people are going to be talking about your Thanksgiving, anyways. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah, oh, you know. we're back next week. No next, more Israel Palestine. Next week we're gonna have another. We're gonna have a month of planned episodes. Yeah. We're gonna do research. We're gonna have stuff. A December yeah. to remember. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the holidays. The show's good when it's like off the fly, though. I don't want to be. I don't want to be fifty fifty with that. Sometimes it's really good off the fly. Sometimes, and, but I don't always want to be looking at my notes. Sometimes yeah, I just want to. want to talk be casual, riff, you know? Yeah. But it's like we don't want to rely, you know, as much as we appreciate you, the listener, the fetahine smokes, Mm -hmm. we don't want to rely on your parasocial relationship with us. Mm -hmm. We hope to make an entertaining and interesting and informative show. And, you know, it's like some people like the Israel-Palestine thing we've done for the last month. Some people don't. But you know what? Some people think we're less funny, Chapo. It's it's like Andre 3000 released a new episode or new album, and it's all jazz. Yeah. So that's fine and artistic, like... Well, it's all flute, yeah. yeah. I listened to some of it. I liked it a lot. But anyway, yeah, it's nice. It's nice back You know, music. the podcast, month to month, some months will be really funny. Some months will be interesting. Some months it'll just be us hanging out. And some months will be informative. Some months it'll be me pissing into a diaper. <laughs> I forgot we did that. That was good. <laughs> we should bring that back. I have the diapers. All right. I would love to get rid of these diapers. I'd you know, now that's the only way. way. <laughs> yeah. We should do <laughs> shit. Another Mike will piss <laughs> himself at some point in the episode <laughs> episode. <laughs> Well, yeah. th- that'll That's be like a, a live donation episode. Maybe. Yeah, we'll have we'll have Ronnie Ronnie Calic on. <laughs> well, yeah. so, are you okay? You seem like your your face is doing a weird thing. It'll be a good palate cleanser for us trying to be a smart podcast. Yeah, is Mike's gonna come piss himself? Mm-hmm. What if we had like a like? What if we had Blossom on to to? To do is, ri- and then we all just piss ourselves. Mm. Oh, I did invite Ronnie Akalik. I sent her a Twitter DM. Yeah, but she never got back to me. Yeah, but you know, I mean, well, you did send her sixty other. T- <laughs> <laughs> she did scroll up and see. <laughs> yeah, fourteen <laughs> other raid my cock DMs. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, it's just, it's just, it's just Sean flexing with no shirt. I just weigh a buck twenty. Yeah. <laughs> just like fucking doing a shirtless pose in Ronnie and colleagues DMs. She's like, some some preteen is trying to get me to rate his dick. <laughs> some preteen boy. Sorry, I I missed your podcast invite. I muted you after you sent me fourteen shirtless pics. <laughs> and offered to fly me out from Lebanon. <laughs> I heard she doesn't date uh, white boys. That's too bad. Yeah. I mean, you know. Anyway. All right. We, we, we respect her professionally. That's why we want her on the show. If you know her listener, let her know. We would like to have her on. Yeah. Anyways, thankful for? Um, for the pod. The pod, the listeners, you know. I'm thankful for old fashions. I'm trying not to drink this week. Yeah. My wife bought me some pants today, and I, <laughs> I tried them on. I can't. I don't know why. People can't buy me pants. But they were thir- size 32 waist, which I've usually <clears throat> fit in comfortably. 
and I like couldn't even. I guess I'm just getting fatter as I get older. Yeah. Because I couldn't close them. I was like, I need another two inches here. Yeah. Mike put on so, my sweater earlier, and now yeah. it's falling off me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, motivation to bulk up a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I'm like a kid wearing dad's clothes. Yeah. But um, where the hell was I? Oh, I'm trying not to drink. Try not to drink. But I guess I am thankful for. For old for fashions. Old fashions. Yeah. Beer is definitely something to be thankful for. Beer? You're a beer guy? I love beer, yeah. Yeah. Anytime, yeah. I like hard liquor to go to sleep. You do? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I typically don't, but if it's around I and love, I need to go to sleep. I like, love yeah. drinking whiskey and then tweeting, no one gives a fuck about 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> Just pissing someone. <laughs> it's really... I think I'm talking... It, it, it really ground. is fun to piss people off. If you're one of my haters listening to this... <laughs> While you're whiskey You drunk. know that you can get under my skin... But yeah, you know, I'm thankful for stand up too, because that's like one of the few things that motivates me to. Because like yesterday was the first day in like you know weeks yeah. that I hadn't just gone straight home from work and yeah. just smoked weed. Because yeah. I was like, I have to write stand up for the show. It's the best. It, but I mean, when it's, yeah, all the jokes I wrote were dog shit. But at the same time, it made me do something. So it's like, okay, now I have to do better next time. But I have to write like. 20 jokes to get to something that yeah, ends yeah. up working on stage. Well, it's crazy. So you know like, that. And you're, again, one of the funniest comedians. But it's just the way it fucking works is even if you're, like, funny, and, and no matter how long you do it, you have that kind of voice in your head. Yeah. But you still, like, just through trial and error, you write, like, what, 50 garbage jokes for every workable well, one? I saw Seinfeld at Gotham <laughs> once, and he was just, like, working out stuff, and it was nothing. Yeah. It was like, I don't want to look at your phone! <laughs> I don't want to see your phone. Do you have pictures of 14-year-old <laughs> girls on it? Otherwise, no. Where are the underage bitches at? <laughs> yeah, he comes off like a substitute teacher when he's working out. Material. You go to the high school to pick up your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Central Park and look at women. Oh, can I say this? Do we have time? I watched uh, half of Jammin' in New York, the Carlin special that you oh, guys Oh, yeah, you were shitting you on it. You said great. Patrice is better. I wasn't... I'm not shitting on it. I just, like, there's something about... I, I, obviously, no no disrespect to Carlin, but I just... Uh, he... A lot, a, a lot of his stuff kind of bugs me, because it's sort of... It feels a little easy to me. It's, like, memorized word for word. There's, like, a rhythm to it where... Um and it's kind of, it's a little, like, cheesy. Get on the plane, get on the plane. Sure, Fuck sure. I'm going to get in the plane. Evil can, evil can get on the plane. Anyways. Do you ever lose your keys and you can't find them? Do you ever, do you ever walk into a room and forget why you walked in there? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Genius, political commentator. But I, but I just think that Patrice was such a funnier person. <coughs> Patrice is a funnier stand-up, but that's the thing. It's Carlin, like... The body of work. It sticks with you. Like, yeah. you can be... If you are good enough, if you make enough of a human connection, it doesn't yeah. matter if... Like, Jim Gaffigan is a funnier stand-up than George Carlin, but Carlin's mm -hmm. more memorable because he makes more of a human connection. He sure. says things that kind of grab you in a way that a Gaffigan said where you yeah. laughed, but you barely remember what he even talked about. Yeah. The Patrice bit where he's talking about Mike Tyson getting accused... And he's like, and then and then she said that he ate a pussy. I was like, case closed. He's like, that's an innocent man right there. <laughs> he's like, I'm not raping, opening your lips up. Hmm. Oh, that's not funny to you, Sean? No, it is funny. Okay. All right, everybody. <laughs> thankful for the we, boomers. What's that? I'm thankful for the boomers. Yeah, I want to say I'm thankful for my kid, but it's like my kid's life could just be taken away so easily with a fucking bomb. You know, child services. <laughs> yes, that too. so easily yeah. <laughs> by these people who raided my home. No, if Joe Biden wanted to kill my kid, he could, and no yeah. one would care. And then, and then liberals would be on Twitter being like, "I know he killed Mike Racine's kid, but you, we have to vote for him, or there's, or there's fascism." It would be nice if you get killed. Like that'll be the fastest New York Post turnaround for here's his fucked up statements. Why you shouldn't care that he died? <laughs> yeah. It would like, it wouldn't even yeah, be like yeah, twenty yeah. minutes before your body hit the floor. They just that. the episode titles. They could, <laughs> they could. <laughs> they don't have to look at the titles. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, enjoy the time with your family. Have a couple old fashions for the Out mm. Smokes boys. 
Uh, we hope we hope you get to relax this weekend. You know, take it easy, watch some football. Yeah. Um, yeah, planes, know. trains, automobiles. Eat some rolls. Really enjoy. You know, Thanksgiving. It's over very quickly. It takes ten minutes to it's, you know, eat it's, all the food. It is nice. It is the nicest holiday because it's so important to spend time being thankful. Yeah, and we do have to do that because we bitch a lot in this podcast. Right. But it is important. Like we're thankful for you, the listeners, especially the patrons, but especially even the, the listeners patrons. who fucking bitch yeah. and make comments. Yeah. We're thankful for you. We're, We're thankful, thankful you care you. enough to spend even any time with and, us. Yeah. Any of your precious time in this life. We're so thankful for you. Yeah. And we love you. We're thankful for all you guys. Um, all right. We'll see you either on Patreon this weekend or next week. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>